Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome again to another painting tutorial. Today we'll be doing a waterscape and we'll be doing or we'll be using a lot of greens today. So get your set greens ready and some yellows of course. We'll be doing a mountain or a rocky a rocky <laughs> landscape. So yeah, here are the colors that we'll be using for today's painting tutorial. Of course, they are listed in the description box below so you can check them out if you forget what I say. <laughs> All right, we have here black, titanium white. We have a set green, as I've already mentioned, um, burnt sienna, and primary blue, and of course, lemon yellow. So yeah, let's uh, sketch first the subject. All right okay i'm gonna use a small brush for sketching nothing complicated here just use any brush that you have um within your reach you don't have to grab a special type of brush in sketching you can even use a pencil for this and for the sketch i'm just gonna use my blue okay just to show you where things are gonna go this is not the final look anyway so i'm gonna sketch first where the like the mountain or the rocky portion is gonna go like that. The right side will be covered with foliage and some trees anyway, so you don't have to worry too much about the right side. Again, I'm just gonna grab my blue and we're gonna identify where the horizon is gonna go. Definitely here. It's almost one half of the canvas paper that I'm using. I'm using an A3 canvas paper in fact, you can actually use any canvas size that you want. You don't have to have the same canvas size that I'm using. But for purposes of study, maybe, yeah, you can use the same canvas size. It's just that I'm not really forcing anyone to, you know, to have the same exact materials that I'm using. It is ideal that you, do, you use the same thing, but it is not uh, mandatory, right? Okay, now I'm going to use my same color blue maybe i'm gonna add a little bit of sap green to my blue add some water i'm gonna add a little bit of red this is just to tone down the color okay maybe a little bit of white my paint my palette is quite dry because it's an old painting i mean old palette or from my previous painting so i'm just gonna color this area with this color Right, that's just preliminary, okay? Okay, as we go down, okay, the water area, I'm going to lighten things up a bit. I'll be using more white and yellow. Okay, I'll be getting my white and yellow and I'm just gonna brush right here maybe I use too much yellow so I'll be adding more green like so and always do it in a horizontal way Okay, this time I'll be using more white, so just grab your white. With the type of paper that I'm using, I need to be more fast because it dries pretty quick. So if your paint, if your paints don't dry pretty quickly, just like mine, it's all right to take your time. Me, for purposes of time and for purposes of being able to blend, I'm just going to go a little bit fast. You can always rewatch the video anyway. Don't worry about that. All right. Oh, this is nice nice blending as i told you i'm not really concerned about the right area since we'll be painting over it with some foliage all right 
Okay, just like that. Now let's go to the rocky part. We'll be using our palette knife as well. So get your palette knives ready. For the underpainting of that rocky part, I'll be using black. And maybe some sort of burnt sienna. All right, let's start underpainting now. I'm gonna get my black, and this time I'll be mixing it with burnt sienna, and I'm just gonna go up and down to create, actually I'm not really creating anything, I'm just covering it with this color. But I might as well do it in a horizontal, or sorry, in a vertical way, so that I don't lose the, the patterns as I go. Okay, remember that this is the underpainting, all right? Don't worry too much. Okay, to make it more natural, I'll be adding a little bit of green in the process. So just grab your green without washing your brush, mixing it with the brown and the black. Just mix all those colors together. We're basically creating a black color, but you can still see some sort of green, especially when you look at it closely. Okay, for this area, for the right side, I'll be getting my blue. I actually washed my brush a bit, but um, I'll be getting my bluey color. I need to make this area blue because it will be light later because of the light, okay? Because of the light hitting the rocks. I can even add white if I want to. Remember that this area will be covered with foliage anyway, but we wanna make sure it's quite light or it's lighter compared to the other portions of this rocky area. Okay, this is preliminary, definitely an underpainting. We want to make sure that everything is covered first before we proceed to detailing. Because this is the bulk of the painting, and when the bulk of the painting is done, it makes it easier for me to finish it because I feel like we're there already, you know? If you know what I mean. So I'm going to lighten this up. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm going to wash my brush out. Okay. I'm going to get more blue. So using my blue color, I'm just going to add a little bit of black just to tone down that color. Maybe this is too blue. I'm gonna add a little bit of green. Okay. It's just repeating what we've already done. This time we're relayering it. Okay. Just like that. And you know me, I'm gonna use my fingers to blend. All right, just like that. Okay. All right, I'm gonna wash my brush out now. Okay, I want to get my palette knife already. Or maybe not, I'm just gonna use my ordinary brush for now. And let's create some details on the rocks and we'll be using white and blue. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to tone down that whiteness. Let's start creating. I'm going to add more blue. Okay. 
This is very um, abstractish, okay? I want to create some texture, some patterns. Okay, and I'm also doing it quite vertically because we want to make sure that the pattern of rocky areas that you see in nature are being uh, observed. Okay, I told you I'll be lightening the right side. Because the light is coming from the left side, so it's hitting the right side. Okay, just try to lighten it. Okay. Like so, okay. Just try to enjoy the looseness of this stage. We're not yet detailing. like that. Try to create some patterns. So the colors underneath are mixing with my light color that I'm using now. It's kind of nice because um, it gives me that natural effect that I would not have achieved if I was just strictly applying the colors, waiting for the colors to dry. Sometimes wet on wet is good as well with acrylics. I know with oil, it, wet on wet is the, is the game, right? But with acrylics, you can absolutely wait for the paint to dry. But this time, I want to do some wet on wet techniques. Okay, now I'm, gonna, I'm grabbing my green, okay? I'm going to mix it with a little bit of blue or maybe black. Or maybe brown just to tone down the color we don't want super bright green at the moment and I'm just gonna create some sort of trees that are located on top of the rocks maybe some plants it could be anything it, it could be anything you know from afar Trying to create some, the white is actually mixing, which is okay. All right, just like that. I'm just using green, toning it down with some red and or brown. You don't want to use pure green at the moment. All right, just like that. It's just to add texture to an otherwise boring rocky landscape. All right. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my yellow, mix it with my green to add some little highlights on the trees, okay? Also making these areas quite dimensional. A little bit of um, interest.
okay like that like so I'm gonna get my black to add more like indentations dimensions especially down here all right like that you see I'm not really touching this area but we will be using a little bit of blue okay get your blue and I'm just gonna make some blue bluey colors going on Not because the mountain is blue, it's more of light and maybe um, uh, snow, melting snows. I'm going to lighten some areas as well. All right. And I think this is the best time to use the palette knife. Okay, so I'm just going to get my palette knife so that we create that texture already. Okay, I think I need more white. Alright, I'm going to get more white, like pure white. And I think I'll be needing to buy more paint later, like some new paints. I'll be dabbing on some white on top of this rocky, the right side of the rocky portion. Okay, just like that. I'll be adding more white right here. Okay, I told you I'll be using the palette knife, so we will be using that later. For now, let's just use our brushes. Okay like that okay I think we need to use the palette knife now yeah this looks good I'm gonna use my palette knife I'm going to use the back of the palette knife to create some texture on the mountain. So I'm just going to dab onto my white. Okay, here. Okay, also here. No particular pattern is necessary, but you have to make it look natural. So meaning you don't really have to control the knife, you just have to go with the direction that it's going. Okay. Right. Okay, I'm gonna leave it like now. I mean, I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Let's go back to this area. We're gonna allow the paint to dry because it's just too wet because of the paint um, 
thickness. So we're going to do some plants right here on the right side. I told you that this will be covered with plants anyway. So I'm going to use a small brush to create some leaves, right? So I'm going to get my black. Let's use our black first before we proceed to using some lighter colors. We always do first with the dark. I usually do it first with the dark before I proceed with the light colors. So I'm just going to create some uh, leaf-like or foliage-like foliage -like brush strokes right here on the right side. Try to cover... I told you it will be covered with paints anyway, but still good that we place some colors right there so that the spaces will not be looking awkward. Right, so let's start first with this. You may want to use your fan brush, but I'm going to use that later. For now, I just want to cover this thing with this dark paint. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of brown here and there just to get that dark color already. Right. Already present. Okay, we don't want to miss applying that color later. So I'm going to draw some... Uh, stems or branches okay just like this very easy right I categorize this painting under the easy category just use some more brush strokes all right Okay, maybe you can add more like branch. I'll be using a smaller brush later so that we create small branches. For now, let's use the big or relatively big brush. Okay, and we'll be using more greens later. Okay. We'll be using greens and as I told you, we'll be using yellows as well. Okay, just continue dabbing on some dark foliage because later we will be using light green color. Okay, just continue. I'll be getting my fan brush later. just to create some um, uh, natural looking foliage, foliage like brush strokes. Okay, maybe here as well, down here. So it's more of a scenic uh, painting. So the viewer is right behind the trees or this foliage. They are not right in front of the lake. So I'm going to get my green now so that we create some lighter colors. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush out so that we can use the green. Okay, using my sap green and maybe yellow, I'm just going to do some lighter, okay, like that, foliage. Okay, this is where the light hits. Okay, we will use a different shade of green later. For now, let's just use this plain sap green with some yellow. Okay, I'll be adding white to my green. 
because I can barely see the okay just like this so the purpose of the black foliage is to create contrast and dimension meaning those foliage are not really black they are more of um, not being hit by the light or they are not really receiving light okay more foliage right here Okay, so we will be needing more yellow. Okay, maybe we can add a little bit of plant right here so that it's more balanced. Okay, maybe I'm going to add a little bit of plant right here. Okay, just like that. And we'll just keep on layering. Okay, remember that I told you we'll be using the um, fan brush, so I think we can use that. So get your fan brush ready. Right. And we're not actually done with the water just yet. We are not yet done with the waters. We'll be adding more details on the water. We're just trying to balance everything as we do this. And then as the paint, or while we're, while we're waiting for the paint to dry, we can actually move on to another part so that we maximize our time. We don't waste too much time. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna switch to a cleaner brush because my, my brush is super dirty already. I'm gonna get my yellow and maybe white. Let's add some highlights on this part of the foliage. Just a little bit of highlight. You don't want to overdo this step. Right, just like that. Okay, here as well. Remember that we have a little plant going on right here. So don't forget to highlight as well. Okay. All right, now let's go to the waters because I feel like I'm doing a lot of foliage. It's getting a little uh, repetitive, so we can um, we can leave it uh, we can leave it like that just for now. We'll just go back to it later. All right, I'm gonna wash my brush out or just use a cleaner brush. Okay, I'm gonna get my white. Okay, I'm gonna get more white. Let's start creating some reflections on the waters. So I'm gonna add a little bit of reflection going on right here. 
and also here. You see where the white markings on the rocks just make some reflections. Okay, just like that. And make your reflections um, horizontal. Just like that. Okay, more. Oops. My yellow is actually mixing with... Okay, my blue is mixing. So I think I need a cleaner white. And to fix that, we can simply use a clean brush just to remove it. Okay, just like that. Okay, again, using white. Okay, and also here, don't forget, make some little bit of reflections. Okay, now we will go a little bit um, vertical. Okay, using the same brush, I'm just going to go and make some vertical. Like vertical brush strokes. Again, you don't want to overdo that because uh, it will not look natural. Make it quite um, subtle, simple. Okay, just like that. It's okay if the yellow is mixing. It's okay because it's the waters. Okay, so a little more highlight. Okay, let's see. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to the mountain. I'm gonna use my white and I'm just gonna apply some white color on the sky. Okay, make sure that you paint over the mount the line, the mountain line so that you create that foggy effect. Like that. You can actually color your sky with the different color if you want, but it will not be consistent with the color of the rocks because our rocks are pretty blue because of the light melted snow so if you darken your sky you might as well not use light colors especially on top of these rocks that i'm doing you might want to use a darker color okay Just highlight it like that. Okay, I'm gonna use some watered down white just to create some more fluidity going on on the water area. All right, just like that, mm, nice. 
and then okay, I'm gonna get again my yellow and white start highlighting some trees on top of the rocks So the trees here that we're doing are just suggestive of trees. They're not really trees, especially we're not detailing them. They are just suggestive of the shape of what may be found on the rocks. That's how we do perspective. Okay, now I'm gonna get back to my black just to create, again, more indentations and unevenness on the the rocks you don't want to make it look flat in 2d as much as possible Just a little bit of black here and there. Now we really didn't use our burnt sienna. So I'm going to use a little bit of burnt sienna. So that our rocks will appear more natural. Like there are some sort of brownie colors going on. All right, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna use that dark color just to darken a bit our waters because everything will be reflected right here. So we should also do some sort of black because we use black here. So the black color should also be present down here. Okay. Maybe a little bit here just to give it some depth okay it's not just pure white make it subtle you don't want to overdo that step all right just like that nice oh i love this one okay maybe let's now use our fan brush because i keep saying we'll be using our fan brush so i'm not gonna wet my brush i'm just gonna dab onto my black and start creating some um, foliage like brush strokes going on as much as possible try to darken the corners of the painting because it's gonna frame it's gonna frame the painting and make your viewer or your audience look at the center so I'm just gonna fill in all the blank sp the bald spaces that I see Okay, now I'm gonna get my yellow and mix it with the green just to create more foliage like looking brush strokes. Okay, maybe I need more white. It's getting muddy. Okay, it's getting really, really muddy. So, anyway, I'm just gonna get more yellow. Okay, and then using the same brush, using our fan brush, okay, we're gonna do and apply some highlights on the foliage. Okay, just gonna use my yellow and let's go back, make some highlights right here. You can actually use your white to make it a little more bright, but since, yeah, you can do that. And some greens just make your foliage look thicker and fuller all right just like that i really love this one okay now i want to lighten a bit more or maybe straighten i'm gonna straighten 
I'm gonna straighten the horizon. It's kind of weird looking. So, yep, I'm gonna get my blue and green. Let's try to fix it. Yeah, just like that. Okay, of course you can fix it more. I'm gonna get my black just to fix it. All right, let me check. Way better. Okay, I'm gonna add more patterns right here. Okay, just like that. I love this one. I'm going to use white to highlight even more some of the leaves right here. Again, you don't want to overdo this um, step because too much highlight just ruins instead of beautify your, your painting. Just like that. Really beautiful, right? Okay, I think this area needs a little more depth and contrast. It's too flat. Let me check. And now using a white brush, I'm just going to wet it. And I would like to use my white, just pure white. Right here. Okay, I just apply that. And using my brush. I'm just going to spread some white paint on the sky part. So that again, we highlight. Some people are scared of touching the paint, but not me. Okay, just like that. Just to make it more... Uh, foggy to give it more a foggy effect or maybe icy not foggy an icy effect all right all right let me check oh i love this one way way better than i expected Again, I'm just fixing the reflections. And I think we're done. So I'm going to sign this now because it's looking so good already. I'm going to sign this now. And using white, I'm just going to sign right here. Okay, it's very hard for me to sign, but... Okay. Weird signature. Okay. Yep. This is nice. Okay. Maybe I'm just going to add a little more. I'm just going to get my blue. I'm going to water it down. And I'm going to make some, like that, a little bit of that blue color. Mm -hmm, yeah, I like it. Also, right here, 
just to again re-identify where the lines or where the rocks are located yep like that okay all right so i think we're done guys and i hope you enjoyed this one if you like this video let me know in the comment section below if you're painting along with me let me know in the comment section below as well if yeah if you want to share this with your friends yes share this on your social media so that they know that i exist and see you in my next video mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. bye guys